Welcome back to Metal Loop. Today's video is an oil change guide for a 2011 GMC Terrain SLT1 V6. This video also applies to those who have a Chevy Equinox. We'll walk through the process step by step and all of the tools, parts, and specifications are in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more DIY videos like this weekly. Sparing a couple clicks really supports the channel by telling YouTube that you found this video helpful. Thank you. Let's get started. You shouldn't need to warm up the car any more than the time we're going to spend getting the car up on the ramps. Modern oils are pretty thin, so we just need enough time to mix up the oil before draining to ensure that all the dirty stuff comes out too. Now that the car is up on ramps with the proper jack stand and wheel chalk placement, we can pop the hood with the lever located here. On the front of the car, the hood latch can be pushed to the right and that will release the hood. The hood has a strut and will stay up by itself. The grade of oil is on the oil cap and we'll loosen that to help the oil join faster. Since we're here, let's also check the oil level. Checking that the oil isn't too low can help confirm that there aren't any leaks, and we also want to make sure that the oil isn't cloudy or milky, which could be a sign of engine trouble. Underneath the car, the location of the oil plug is here. You'll need a 15mm wrench or socket. I'm using a socket on a fairly long 3 8 ratchet to help break loose what I assume is an over-tightened drain plug. It's on a little tight, but not too bad. We'll finish removing the plug all the way and begin draining. Back on the top side of the car, the oil filter is located here. The good news is, is that it's a spin-on, so it will be super easy to replace. The bad news is, it's at a bit of an odd angle, so we're going to remove it from up here to avoid oil dripping on us from below. I'm using an oil end cap wrench, but a strap wrench works just as well, if not better, as you'll see in a moment. It's a little bit of a struggle to find the right angle to get the ratchet in between the oil filter and the radiator fans. As we get the oil filter loose, make sure the oil pan is shifted to catch the oil coming out of the filter. Now that the oil filter is off, I just want to note that this particular terrain had an aftermarket oil filter. That filter used the 76mm 15 flue oil and cap wrench, while the OEM AC Delco uses a 76mm 14 flute. If you work on lots of different cars or already have a set of cap wrenches, I hope this helps. But quite honestly, a strap wrench would have been the better choice for the clearance and avoided the sizing issues. Let's continue preparing everything. The drain plug has an O-ring that is not a crush washer, so it doesn't technically need to be replaced. We're replacing it here for the sake of the video, but you shouldn't have to unless you see that yours is damaged. We'll also put a little oil on the O-ring to help it seal as well. For the new AC Delco oil filter, that also needs a little oil on the gasket. Since this filter is going on almost upside down, priming the filter with oil would just have it spilling out, so we'll skip that. I've heard from some experienced techs that they don't recommend pre-filling anyways. Let me know in the comments if you prime your filters or not. Now we'll get the drain plug back on the car. At home, you could have done this immediately after the oil finished draining and before removing the filter. It helps avoid a mess as oil will keep dribbling out of the pan. For the filter, we're just spinning it on by hand. We shouldn't need an oil end cap wrench or the strap wrench, and it only needs to be hand tightened. Over tightening the oil filter can actually squeeze the gasket too much and cause a bad seal that might leak. With that done, we can begin filling with oil. The GMC Terrain needs 6 quarts of 5W30 Dexos approved oil. I'm using the OEM AC Delco oil, but it's a bit pricey. There's a lot of Dexos approved options out there. I'll have some alternatives in the description below. I like to stop about a half a quart short so that we can first prime the new filter and check the oil level. We'll fire up the engine and give it a couple minutes to fully pressurize. Make sure the jack stands are removed along with the wheel chocks. Now is a good time to double check the oil filter and underneath the car to make sure everything was fastened properly and not leaking. Now let's level the car before we put the rest of the oil in. Then we'll check the dipstick. And it looks like we're just under the lowest dot on the dipstick. Generally, it's about one quart between the bottom and top lines of a dipstick. Putting the last half quart in should get us to the middle dot. We don't want to be all the way to the full line because the engine oil will expand a little when the car is at operating temperatures. And here you'll see we're right at the middle where we want to be. And the last step is to reset the oil life monitor on the dash. We'll hit the menu button to toggle over to the vehicle information menu. Use the up and down arrows to navigate to oil life. All you need to do is hit set clear and when it asks you to confirm, just hit yes. 
And that's it. I hope you found this oil change video helpful. If you happen to own a GMC Terrain or Chevy Equinox, then my next video will also feature this car. So if that's interesting to you, I hope you'll subscribe and come back next week. And if you're watching this video a couple weeks after release, a few of those DIY guides may already be available and should be popping up now. I'm Alan, and this is Metaloop. As always, thanks for watching.